Thanks, Sing Sue. That was great. All right. Now I'm going to introduce our second set of speakers, um, Dr. Daisy Zong and Rob Hatherill from uh, Del Mar College, and they're going to be talking about uh, developing a highly capable biomanufacturing workforce in Southern Texas. Take it away. Thanks. Thanks, Sandy. Thanks, Sandy. Um, let me start a slideshow very quick. Well, first, thank you for inviting us for this uh, seminar. So this is the ATE grant we got um, about a couple of years ago. And Rob um, is the PI and I serve as a co-PI. This is also in collaboration with NCGM, National Center for Therapeutic Manufacturing. And I um, want to introduce myself a little bit. I'm Daisy Zhang, I'm the full-time uh, professor of biotechnology working for Delmar College. And um, I took this position in 2010 and I'm still the only full time to teach all the biotech courses. And Rob, do you wanna introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Let's do a sound check. Am, am I loud and clear? Okay. Yes. All right, hi, um, I'm Rob Hatherill and uh, I've been at Delmar a little longer than Daisy. And we've had a, we've been successful with a number of ATE grants, and this one is focused, like Daisy already mentioned, just um, trying to get biomanufacturing uh, technical skills. And we um, we have a number of local uh, employment needs, Houston in particular, and even uh, up in the Austin area. Uh, in fact, uh, there's a company in Houston that is desperate to get. Um, you know, employees that are trained in biomanufacturing skills. And so it's a it's a locally and regionally, uh, you know, uh, career that's in high demand. I mean, they were literally out on the sidewalks with those sandwich boards trying to recruit people at one of the biomanufacturing companies in, in the Houston area. So we think um, this is another um, kind of branch of, of our um, biotech program that Daisy kind of heads up. Go ahead, now Daisy wants to talk about the new campus because we also have a South Side campus. Go ahead, Daisy. All right, so uh, Dharma College is a Hispanic serving public community college and was funded a long time ago. Um, the biotechnology program, um, it's actually, it was actually funded in 2008 and Rob, um, Rob was the major funder um, of the program. So start from next semester, they're moving, they call us the signature program now. <laughs> so they're moving all of us to this uh, Southside campus. And this is where we're gonna stay. Um, the campus is almost almost finished construction, but uh, without grasses. So this is a model picture, not really a real picture. So that, that give us a chance to expand the program. Um, that's one of the, that's one of the, um, I guess the hard, hardware, right? We got from college administration for their support. We got more space and and better location because Southside is so much better than where we are right now to attract more students um, into the into the program. You want to chip in, Rob, on this one? Yeah. Also, so our um, labs are confined to this. They call it the STEM building here. Can you see my cursor? No, because I'm, um, yeah. Oh, can you point to the STEM building? Yeah. yeah. The so STEM. the third floor is so-called STEM. And we're um, uh, in this back um, uh, area here on the third floor. And the interesting thing or, or the, the beneficial thing of this, this uh, new building is Daisy has a dedicated cell culture lab. And it's right next to her actual lab. Um, and so that's going to make it a lot easier currently in our building she has to run all the way down the other end of the hall when she does cell culture and it's it's not convenient uh, to do that anyways so it's it's going to be much better more space more equipment things like that to be well equipped i guess all right so um a little bit introduction of our program so we have a class between 10 to 16 people and currently we're offering one year level two certificate and two year associate degree. And our student profile, it's most of their freshmen and we do get uh, two or three 
you know, time CC graduates normally couldn't find a job after the graduation and do six months to a year of certificate and immediately got employed. We also have uh, articulation with um, on-site to high school. And um, the, the idea is the high school students attend um, their dual credit, of course. Um, they attend Delmar would walk away with a certificate by the time they finish. And of course we have a uh, university articulation with TEMCC, which has been really paid off. And uh, we're in the progress to develop another articulation with Texas A&M uh, Kingsville. So overall right now we have 60% of students transfer after they finish with us and 40% of graduates um, will enter the workforce. But I wouldn't um, limit to this number 40% because by tracking the graduates, we found out that uh, among the transfer students, when they graduate from four-year school, they have much better chance to get employed because of their experience with, with our program. So, um, Gob, want to chip in on this? Yeah, program? I just want to point out, um, can you point John Ramirez up upper left? Um, yeah. Okay, so this is one of Daisy's students, John Ramirez. Um, he currently is working on a PhD at the University of Wyoming, and and they can't believe you know the level he's at, you know his his skill set because he also was um, if you go down Daisy the just below show um, the the uh, LB and the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab picture there. No, well, that's Molly, but go go to the left. See John, John with in yeah. So John spent um, a couple summers with me at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. And he just, um, his skill level just went through the roof. And so um, they just, they're so happy with him as a PhD student, because because he's just really uh, advanced even at that level. And then if you look, uh, oh, wait, wait, Daisy, go back. Um, just go, go on this, uh, this is an ASM regional meeting. Um, and basically we have four winners. We swept one category. And then we won um, uh, the uh, Kim won the undergraduate um, oral competition. Now uh, these students are either you know working in uh, career positions or in advanced degree programs. Most you know it's it's pretty amazing. So they they um, the graduates are successful. All right, that's it. Rob, I didn't mean to cut you short, but we do only have. 20 minutes, I try to keep the time, okay? Yeah. yeah so if I try to, you know, flip the slides, that might be my cure for you, <laughs> if you don't mind. All right, so there, here's some couple of piece of data that um, from our last um, institutional review board. So overall, we have a steady increase on the enrollment and um, we have, uh, this is from uh, six years total from our last institutional data, we got about 200, over 260 people declared a major, either major in associate or certificate. And we do keep a, um, you know, a decent course completion from all those institu institutional uh, data. So, and do you wanna add something about those data, Rob? No, go ahead. Okay. So this grant in collaboration with uh, NCTM, um, this is actually provided by Dr. Susan Woodard, uh, who was the, our co-PI to start. Now she has retired. I mean, she has quitted her position there. But um, but when we, uh, to just a little bit introduction about this, this uh, idea when we put this grant together. The idea is we take students for, to, uh, to take their online course first which including all those um, content. Okay, just to save time, you guys can read about those yourself. And then uh, after that, we'll take about 10 students each year, uh, preferably in summer, to go on site to have a two weeks accelerated hands-on training in uh, about um, therapeutic manufacturing process. And then because there's a lot of industry representative uh, embedded in that center, we should be able to provide some interview opportunities for the students who went through the went through the program. And right now they're doing a bunch of very exciting um, project over there. And a lot of those are uh, related to the pandemic. Rob? Go ahead, I'm, I'm fine. 
You are, you're good? Okay. So originally when we put this grant together, this is a proposed uh, degree plan. Um, we're trying to develop a you know, level two certificate for biomanufacturing. And um, so the major developing course will be this one, so BITC 1491. And um, it's listed as a special topic, but it's really the introduction of biomanufacturing. And of course, later on now, we, we, I have heard many comments from, uh, you know, from other collaborators that I should include a quality control course in this degree plan. But you know, right now we're, we're encounter problems to establish, I'll explain more in the next one. And you wanna chip in your up? Yeah, I agree with the QAQC course. And we, we've been, we, does anyone have an idea? Cause is, is there an online a uh, reputable course that the students could take maybe. Uh, we're trying to figure to get that in there somehow. Right. Um, so we encounter a major problem, which is in Texas, the state only allow college to have one level two certificate, one level one certificate, and then two year associate degree in each area. Right now, Delmar has only uh, already have a level two certificate of biotechnology and we have an associate, we do not have a level one certificate. So by the time you know, I was just about to pass all the correct meetings, the dean pointed out. So the last minute, uh, we just did a quick change. So what we have done so far is to, to take the introduction to a bomb manufacturing as an or class, um, as an or class to internship. So the, when I was doing that, the design in my head is I could, we're trying to give students options for the one who wants to transfer and maybe even go to graduate school, maybe they can skip this course, right? They can skip the biomanufacturing and focus on internship. And for the students who really wanna get into the industry of biomanufacturing, they can skip the internship and then took this class instead. So we have put it into an or course in both certificate or only level two certificate and associate degree. And that's what we have done, you know, this, <laughs> this semester. And of course, you know, I, I just learned that might not be a good idea. So I'll explain more um, about that. Um, Rob, do you want to chip in or should I move on? Oh, I just want to mention that we got a uh, chat for uh, online QAQ, QC course. So thanks. Okay. All right. I haven't got a chance to, uh, to look at it. So um, we haven't been able to take students for the on-site uh, for the two weeks workshop, but we will do it in a month, I mean, a couple of months. Our first workshop is coming up in June, but the grant has supported some, uh, some students you know, in, in during the summer of 2021. And there's a couple of them who both got job offer. And, and Charlie has been featured in the ATNSF newsletter, I believe, and she worked in uh, um, um, Philadelphia and got the job offer, although she didn't take it because she wanted to finish the four year school. And then uh, here's a offer letter for a student, Christopher, who has, he has done, he has finished the bachelor degree from TMCC, did six months in, in our uh, college reverse transfer bunch of credit and finish our level two. And then um, because of the grant, he got a ten. He got a ten weeks internship with Dr. Mary Paul Moore in Insel and got the offer right after that. And he's doing great right now to work in the company. So we have we have you know uh, benefit from this grant to you know student got some of good opportunities already. Rob. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Go ahead. Okay, let's move on. Yep. And other than those two students, the grant last year supported altogether um, 10 students for internship work. Some of them go to our uh, sister university, some of them stay with me. And of course, we just see the, um, the example of you know, the student who actually work in biomanufacturing set up and got a, a setting and got a job offer. And this is a Curie um, survey post internship. And um, there's, 80 students ask, 80 questions ask about, about this, you know, from those 11 students. And the feedback is quite positive. And this is just one of the example. And I know it's kind of small here. The, the green color represents the great gain. The blue is the uh, good gain. And then the gray is the moderate and then the red is the no gain. So the most of students, uh, their feedback about the internship, you know, it, it's quite positive. 
You want to chip in, Rob? Yeah. Um, please mention this is a compilation of a number of students. I think you, you've got a, a, on this uh, horizontal axis, you've got 35 and over 40 up here in this group. Um, and it, we use two different assessment tools, but the one that uh, this is showing, um, it, what, what's the name of this one? It's called uh, Daisy? Curry. Yeah, Curry. And it's, keep in mind, it's been tested for both reliability and validity. Um, and we have two sets of data that show kind of um, pretty astounding uh, outcomes, I guess. Yeah, this is accumulation of, uh, I think it's this three year, three year internship. We just put those data together because Rob is trying to publish this data um, in a community college research. I, I don't remember, I can't remember the journal. Um, yeah, that's just from, uh, from one of the questions. So here is the basically the training schedule that is coming up in June. And I, I do think NCTM has a very, very mature and um, well-developed program for those two weeks. They cover quite amount of information in the field of biomanufacturing. So the students uh, that who finish this will, will get an on-site certificate. And then the online course will be taken before the, the on-site training. Um, so if they impress the industry representative there, that would be even better. So that was that was the whole design. And you know, for me as a faculty, you know, this is I'm not trained in biomanufacturing. I'm a plant molecular biologist. I'm a plant person. I'm actually more agriculture during my graduate school. So this will also provide us an opportunity to get into this field. And I'm hoping to develop at the end of this program. You know, we we can we can take all this you know experience from an ACTM and really establish uh, a nice biomanufacturing program at Delmar College. Rob? Yeah, I just wanna mention that, um, yeah, this is part of Texas A&M College Station, their campus, it's just uh, technically on the campus there. And basically this is a really, the, the local industry really value this training because one cohort that Susan Woodard was telling us, every single one of them got hired after they took this class into like uh, local industry, I think. Remember Daisy, she said that? So yeah, it's really- Yeah, it's even man. It's even getting more right now because of the, you know, all those higher, of the project related to a, to a pandemic COVID-19. So they have a lot of project in, in this field right now. Okay, so here is, here is the <laughs> complication part of it. And we had a one meeting, I think a couple of my, my committee member may be in this, in, this, in this chat room right now. So we had a advisory uh, meeting last Friday, is that one week ago, and I, I, we got a chance to talk to our industry partners. And there's good news coming by talking to them, which is there's more and more two-year associate graduates are being hired in the biomanufacturing industry. So it used to be this cliche like, well, why two-year biotech, right? You, you need a four-year to get hired, not anymore. There's more and more. So we're very glad to hear that. Um, but also our industry partner telling us they do value in internship just as important as uh, you know, on-site workshop training or, uh, or taking a course specific in biomanufacturing. They think internship is, is, is important. Students, you know, do get a lot of skill developed, especially the soft skill, right? So that makes me think maybe what we have done on the curriculum modification might not be ideal. And also, you know, one of the most important message from, from our industry partner is, it, it, although they love the two weeks workshop, but they want to see students with a level two certificate of bio manufacturing. So it's very desired. And of course, the quality control course has to be shown down there, not just having like one course of introduction about manufacturing. So with that, when we hear those feedback from our partner, um, my next, next thinking is maybe we'll do something like ACC is doing. I know Linnea, you're here. So you might wanna, <laughs> you might wanna talk about this when we get into the discussion part. We might adding a certificate, level one certificate and changing our current level two certificate into bound manufacturing certificate. But when I click into ACC's level one, that's where their introduction to bound manufacturing course is. So 
Uh, so I might have a couple of questions for Linnea when we get into the discussion. You know, what, what, what do you think about this, this certificate thing? Man, we just have to work, uh, you know, play around with this Texas, this state rule that you, know, you can have two level two certificate in one school. So um, Rob, you wanna chip in? I'm good. You're good? Okay. Oh, we're good, very good on time. I don't think I used the whole 20 minutes. I just want to acknowledge um, the NSF grant, you know, for supporting us to develop this program in Delmar College. And also want to thank um, um, Innova ATE Bio Center, the grant, um, to invite us to be part of this discussion and also other opportunities that, you know, we have and we may get. And uh, I do want to acknowledge Delmar College, Noble, uh, Delmar College uh, Foundation Office. And this is, they're very, very supportive. They have been trying to give us um, instrument to build, up the, to build up the new lab. And also they have supported our interns, not a lot of money. So on top of the grant, we got, you know, the, the foundation private donor money to support, support those students. And those students are, are, are really, um, are benefiting from all these activities um, they're supporting. So that's my, my acknowledgement. And Rob, you want to close up? Or talk? Well, there's a question from Tina about, is there a component of your project that will focus on outreach um, to uh, school districts, aside from your early college high school students, maybe with high school biomedical science or engineering programs? So I. Uh, well, you know, we do have, uh, well, go ahead, Daisy. You no, something. no, you, if you want to answer that, but I just want to make sure that Sandy's okay for us to get into the discussion part. Sure. Oh, okay. okay, yeah, Rob, go ahead. Well, I'm just going to say that we have dual credit system, high school right on our campus, and we do recruit from local high schools into our program, and, they, and they're able to do it as well with uh, dual credit. So they can take our classes um, on, on our campus, well, at least be, they were doing a lot of that before the pandemic started. Now it's, uh, there's, I still have, I think, one high school student uh, in my uh, online classes. So, so we are, we are out, you know, we have an outreach program. It's not as uh, active as it was pre-pandemic, but um, hopefully we'll get back there. Well, thanks, Rob and Daisy. And thanks, Aaron and Ying Su. And now I'm opening opening this up for all the questions. But before before questions start, I just want to mention that I did put a link in the chat to our evaluation form, and we would really appreciate it if you could fill that out before you leave. It really helps us with reporting back to our funder, and um, also helps inform what we do, <laughs> and some of the topics we pick and what we what we offer with webinars. So um, there's another question here um, from Uwe, and I guess this is about uh, the National Center for uh, the, your collaborators, Daisy and Rob, um, and he's mm -hmm. asking how much NCTM charges for the course. Oh, see, <laughs> I don't know exactly because we write everything into the grant. So they got their part of the grant and we got um, all part of the you know, grant award. But I can share here a contact person, Jenny, contact and her email, and she's very good with answering those questions like that. Yeah, I'll share her contact. And I, I think um, anybody wants to ask questions, you can just unmute yourself and go ahead. Jocelyn. Hi there. Um, my question is for, I believe, Erin or um, Ying Su. So I'm a, I'm a high school teacher in Oxnard, California, and I'm just, um, we're starting up a brand new biotechnology course at our high school. So I came here to just learn more about local resources. And um, so I was interested about your curriculum resources and how I might be able to bring that to my school in Oxnard. That is great. That is not far from Aaron though, right? <laughs> so yeah, uh, go to baybeck.org um, and you can find the curricular resources there. Uh, the curriculum are all free if you want to work with this in other ways. Like what we like to do is to work with um, schools to develop pathways. 
Uh, so if you have that pathway in your, it sounds like you're doing what 11th and 12th grade, maybe biotech courses. It's yeah. going to be, we're starting with just one course. It will be for okay. mostly seniors. Okay. Yeah. We like to work also with the lo uh, lower grades, like ninth and 10th grade, because we want to bring in the biotech hands-on side to all students. So they have greater accessibility. And it might also help you get students for your classes as well. Um, and there are some community colleges nearby that we would love to work with to joint partner. Um, and so that you can have your students be more aware of the community colleges in your area and can partner up. So let's talk. I'll put my uh, email on the chat. I know Oxnard College is an Innovate Bio program and they offer biotechnology. So that might be one that you might want to get in touch with. Okay. Are there particular people I should reach out to that you know of or uh, uh, his name is Jim Harbor is the director I believe okay, okay. I uh, you can actually you can find it on the innovate bio website just go to California and kind of drill down <laughs> okay great but email me if you don't okay thank you okay all right um, yeah okay uh, I have a question for um, Aaron and Yingsu too when you're talking about adding the ag biotech skills, I'm wondering like what skills in specifically you were referring to. So it would also depend on what the advisory board members say. Uh, what we're seeing the need right there is a lot of tissue culture. Uh, they are also wanting to do some genotyping uh, of different plants and things like that. So some genomics, some um, tissue culture, um, and, and, and some foundational things like PCR. So those are ones that got come up top of my head. Plant propagation is already a class that I believe, right? Uh, but we'll add more molecular skills to that course. Right, particularly skills that would be utilized in, in plant breeding, in animal breeding, and also in identification of pathogens, genetic testing. And I think, uh, Aaron, you guys are also doing some food safety now, right? So some analytical uh, right. tests and things like that as well. Yeah, and for testing, you know, we use that, those techniques for testing ag water and also plant tissues for, um, for sampling for food safety regulations, yeah. Thanks. I was really surprised um, a, a couple of years ago, I, I looked into how many biotech programs offer plant tissue culture. A lot do. You wouldn't guess because they have a class called cell culture, but there are quite a few that include plant tissue culture in those courses. Oh, so that's interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, Ellen Doherty's high school has a lot of plant tissue culture, I believe, right? That's what people tell me. I haven't looked at it. Um, and yeah, in Florida, it's, it's really big because it's become one of the major ways of propagating ornamental plants. Yes. So yes, no, and we have a rather large ornamental um, uh, industry in this region too, from San Luis and Santa Barbara counties combined. Yeah. Yeah. And I heard that plant tissue culture is an art and a science. <laughs> I used to do some uh, plant tissue culture. I've done it too. <laughs> oh yeah. You're a plant person, right? Or uh, well, way yeah. back when. <laughs> yeah. Way back when. Yeah. Ube, oh, did you have Ube a question? Too. Yeah. I know Ube was a plant person too. Yeah, I got the got the wrong uh, uh, icon there, oh. me, but still, <laughs> thank you all. Um, Daisy and and, and Sally, uh, thanks for sending the contact at Tamu. Um, to be more specific about my question, as you, Daisy, said that uh, Tamu is part of the grant. Um, is it correct to assume that they base that your students don't have to pay extra fees to participate in that uh, uh, NCTM workshop or? How is that no, structured? No, for anything, all the material and then um, equipment using everything, it's it's provided by NCTM, which is pretty much granted uh, uh, granted to them from uh, from NSF. Uh, although for our side, um, we're going to use our grant to pay students for the housing, the meal, and for travel. So Thank you. we have a budget for that. Yeah, it's Appreciate all written it. grant. Yeah. And then your grant is a, a three-year standard. Uh, uh, duration grant or longer? Yeah, it's, it's, it was written for three years, but it was because of the pandemic. Although we were rewarded a couple of years ago, we couldn't do any travel. Right, so right. Really, right. this year is the first year we're going to do the on site training. And yeah. I'm excited and nervous about it both. So I hear you. Hope yeah. I can report it next year, you know, how that goes. Looking forward. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. 
Um, I have a question for Daisy and Rob. So you have this dual credit high school on site. Uh, how many of those students come to your community college? I mean, continue on with Del Mar College. Um, I'll, I'll, I can answer for Baltech students only. Um, so the students who actually a lot of them couldn't finish. To be to be realistic, they couldn't finish a one year certificate by the time they graduate from high school. But almost eighty percent of them actually stay around until they finish. So they do continue. And Rob, are you still around? Anyway, that's really good. Yeah, yeah. I'm proud so of that. I, yeah. Sorry, I, I'm here. I'm here, but my mute button was off screen, so. Okay. I I couldn't unmute. But I know yeah, your I, students attend your biology class also, right? Yeah, and I, I don't really know that data, to be honest, uh, but I guess um, they some of them do. Some of them, you know, I mean, obviously they do, but I, I don't know the data. I haven't really followed them because unless they're in the biotech program, we don't really see them again. They're off somewhere else on campus. Right. It's easy to track biotech major because there's a small group of people. Yeah, I can, yeah, I, I know all of them. Yeah. No, I, I was just curious. It sounds like you're doing great work. I mean, all of you. It's so nice. Um, other <laughs> quest more more questions. Daisy, how how is your work with uh, SARS going? Work with SARS. I mean the virus. <laughs> Well, right, you had some of your students working with SARS-CoV-2 doing projects. Well, it's all simulated. <laughs> yeah, I, I incorporated the bioinformatics part of it, and then uh, we designed a couple of students. You know, the I don't know if anybody tried the BioRad has twisted their kit to SARS, including the ELISA, but now it's not HIV-based, SARS-based. And then there is the um, the real-time PCR. I did a, a several round of real-time PCR to compare which patient has um, more virus load and students just enjoy that. I actually put it into recruiting flyer each year and I got more people sign up for Biotech 1 because I mentioned there's gonna be research on COVID-19. <laughs> so just a little trick, you can work. Yeah, there's about three and then one bioinformatic to compare the genomic uh, genome between SARS-1, SARS-2, you know, all those different, different tools we use. So there's these three labs, um, I pretty much put it together to recruit students into the program using the COVID as my, uh, you know. <laughs> That's neat. I, Uwe yeah. and I are working on something that we should be able to share with you at some point of time too, with looking at whether or not antibodies will be able to neutralize different variants. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, no. I'm, I'm always I'm excited about anything with that we can come up yeah. related to the pandemic. That's that, that got students' attention just like that. Yeah. No, that's good to know. And it, it's it's pretty cool. Well, I want to, I know we're almost at the top of the hour here. I want to remind everybody about uh, our um, evaluation form that we would really, really appreciate it if you could fill that out. I'm going to put it in chat one more time. I also want to remind everyone that we are going to be having um, a kind of a, like a community conversation uh, with the breakout rooms and stuff, May 6th, and uh, a great webinar by um, people who've written textbooks, May 13th, and we've got lots of things going on this summer. You can go to innovatebio.org and learn all about it. And I want to thank everybody for, for attending. It's been really great to see all of you. And, uh, have a great weekend and thank you, Rob and Daisy and Aaron and Ying Su. It's been really nice to hear about your projects and hear what's going on. Thank you for the invitation. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Sandy. And, we'll, and your recordings will be up uh, probably by Monday. <laughs> oh, cool. Thanks.